Hello everyone, this is Isaac Dawson with Vulnerability Research. Today I'm going to be doing a quick little introduction to Dependency Track, which is a product from OWASP. Uh, perfectly free, you can download it, uh, run it yourself. It's a Docker container or containers uh, using Docker Compose. Uh, so it can support either Postgres or a built-in database. I had trouble with the built-in one, so I switched to Postgres and things seem to be running much smoother. Uh, so it's a little bit of a manual process. So uh, dependency track requires you to upload your bombs, create your projects yourself. It does have an API, so you could easily script all these things up. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with it. So here's the kind of view when, once you get it set up. I've already gone ahead and created a single Go app project, uh, which has the uh, bomb format, a number of vulnerabilities already exist. So again, you need to have a, a bomb file already created. So let's create one for this Maven project, which I have not uploaded yet. So you just go to your components tab and then you upload your bomb, choose your file. Again, this would most likely in an organization be automated, but I'm just doing it here for uh, demonstration purposes. So upload that bomb file. I think we have to hit a refresh here. And again, this is gonna process it. There we go. Now we have some components. So you can see that this one has a number of different uh, components uh, for this project. Uh, the overview has not loaded yet. Oh, it's still processing because now we have 697 uh, components. So while this one's loading, I'm going to go back to my other project, Go App, just to give you a better view of what's going on. This one had 201 components, and you can see it gives us the license information. Uh, it uh, tells if, tells us if the component is outdated, so it's doing some sort of checks to see which the latest version. So you see here, this one is the latest available one um, with the license available for that and has zero vulnerabilities. So uh, that's kind of the component lists. Services, I think you can add these yourself or it's part of the uh, SBOM file. Uh, dependency graph is a nice little view of your dependencies as well as uh, kind of the inherited or intrinsic vulnerabilities or excuse me, components that are loaded in. Okay, so you can see this project has a number of uh, first dependencies and then second order dependencies as well. Uh, vulnerabilities gives you a nice little list. Uh, once again, it tells you if it's an outdated component or not, it tells you what the component is, uh, has the CVE information, severity, uh, OSS index, so you can kind of see how well uh, or what the CVSS score is. It doesn't have it built in, it kind of gives you just a severity, um, but it does allow you to kind of have an audit trail, add comments, uh, so forth. Uh, yeah, you can triage it, whatever. So this kind of acts as a dashboard for your dependencies as well, not just, uh, it can tie into, I believe, Jira, but that's it. Uh, but it seems to be, this front end anyways, is built to allow an organization to have a one-stop shop for their dependencies as opposed to uh, based off of an application that's based on immediately being used for um, integration with uh, like GitHub or GitLab, etc. So. That's kind of the view of the components. You can also apply VEX files, which is the Vulnerability Exploitable Exchange document. Uh, sometimes those are included in SBOMs. I don't have one handy, so I didn't really check that out. But it does have this kind of exploit predictions tab, which is kind of nice. It uses the EPSS score, um, and you can see this kind of, again, the same basic data with a different view, um, but yeah. Uh, policy violations, I will go into that in a second, but yeah, you can set up policies as well. So if we go to components, uh, so here's a vulnerability view. Uh, you can actually manually create vulnerabilities, I guess, which I didn't know you could do. Um, yeah, this is a, again, it's a pretty extensive application. Licenses, uh, so it has a built-in set of, it looks like 489, which I believe they're just pulling in from the SBDX uh, directly, which is what we're gonna be doing with our uh, with GitLab's new license DB. Uh, policy management, again, we can create policies. Uh, let's just call it something. And then we're going to set operator violation warn. Uh, and we can add conditions to it. So we can say uh, license is not, uh, uh, say Apache 2.0. Uh, and then we can create this policy and you can actually limit it to different projects. So if you have multiple projects, you say, oh, I only want to apply this to the Go app one and then off you go. So that's the policy system. Oh, they have license groups. So you can kind of, yeah, set that up as well. 
As for administration, uh, so there's a number of interesting little things that you can set here. It uh, looks like Cyclone DX is uh, supported. Email, you can set up for email alerts and notifications. Again, JIRA, you can have JIRA set up uh, for integration with that. Internal components, I'm not too sure what this is. Will be excluded from bonus and written checks for external systems. Okay, so you can kind of exclude your own stuff. Uh, task scheduler, so this is how often the data sources get updated. So it will be able to pull in advisories, NVD information, VolnDB, et cetera, and then apply that to your components. So it will keep it up to date. It's a continuous system. It's not a one-time run a scan and you're done. It's, it's, this is definitely built for dependency, a uh, continuous dependency scanning. So yeah, this is the kind of settings you have there. Analyzers, uh, it does allow you to integrate with other, like Sonatype or VolnDB or SNCC. So that's information is all there. We don't have any of that, so nothing there. Uh, sources, again, you can set those up. Uh, repositories, so this is the type of uh, package managers it uh, supports. Remember, I showed in that other view that you can look at uh, latest versions. I imagine it's communicating with the package registries to get that information. Uh, notifications, again, you can set up uh, notifications. They have a number of different ones you can set up. Uh, you can set it to just a system or a portfolio. Let's do a warning, publisher, and they, these are the ones they support. So Cisco WebEx, Console, Email, Jira, Mattermost, Teams, Webhook, and Slack. Uh, templates, yeah, you set up your templates, nothing big there. Some other additional integrations, uh, kind of security, I think they have some like database information for vulnerabilities and then yeah your usual access management stuff so that's pretty much a dependency track in a nutshell uh if we go back to what was it components no projects let's check what happened with maven oh my gosh that's a lot of vulnerabilities so this one had 903 components uh 401 vulnerabilities 401 exploit prediction which is kind of interesting i don't see any numbers here i don't know Maybe it needs to run another task analysis to pull this information in. Um, but yeah, there's a, quite a number of vulnerabilities in this. I think this is an old, old, old version of Key Cloak. Um, so yeah. Oh, and also you can download the SBOM once it's imported. Uh, so yeah, various other additional features here. Overall, for an open source project, I'm quite impressed. It seems to have a lot of functionality. Uh, I swear a lot of SaaS systems that I've encountered are very similar to this, but they have like millions of dollars in VC funding, whereas someone who knows about this could probably just get this set up, automated a bit with APIs, call it a day for their dependency management system. So yeah, overall, I'd give it a, a good score. So hopefully that was helpful. Until next time.